Well, a very good morning. Welcome to another fishing towel films. Today it's officially the start of the fishing season, so that means the rivers are back open. And that's where I'm going today, down my local stretch of the upper Medway, to see if I can catch myself a nice chub. Let's see what happens. Well, it's great to be back out again by the rivers. Be interested to see how it fishes today. Just make my way through the field, through the gates. Let's see what happens. I can't wait.
finally made it down to, to the river. It's only trouble like during the closed season, everything just springs up, sprouts, and I had a job for in this swim. It was just all completely overgrown. And um, I was walking up, knew it was here somewhere because I could hear the rushing water because there's like sort of rapids and then it sort of drops down into an hole. So I could hear the water, so I knew that I was near. And uh, finally, finally made me way down. God knows what it's like further down the river because it's really, it's like jungle warfare up there. So I'm hoping this, this swim will produce. It's a swim I've fished before. I think I've done a video last year from this swim. And uh, quite a bit of colour to the water, which ain't surprising. After all the rain we've had, we had a bit more rain in the week to top it up a bit. But it looks nice. It always looks so chubby, this. And, and also a few barbel have come out of this peg as well. Or this stretch, stretch of the upper midway. So we we get the gear out, we're going to fish in bread flake and cheese paste, they're the only baits I brought down a lot for the hook. Let's see how we get on, but the swim, as you can see, looks lovely. Albeit a bit overgrown on the way down, but you see, got nice, sort of the water sort of backs up on itself. The rapids is over there, don't you? you might be able to pick it up on the background. And then it rushes through on that far bank there to that overhanging tree and if there's not any chub underneath there then there never will be looks like it's so fishy doesn't it and then you see it backs up on itself there's a bit of a deep hole down in the middle there right let's get cracking well these are the baits that I'm using today oh. A few slices of bread in there. Just want to kick off with some bread flake. Got some cheese paste. I actually made up about six, seven months ago. Freezed it. Got another lot in there as well, just in case the because uh, I'm going to feed some of it as well. And uh, some liquidised bread that I blitzed down to complement the little fish. I'm going to feed a bit of that. Got some halibut pellets as well. So the old chub do like halibut pellets. And I've bought another hook bait option, which is some 14 mil drilled halibut pellets. So if I want to switch over and hair rig a nice big pellet, I'll do that. I just brought a little selection down rather than the whole big bag. I've tried to come as light as I possibly can. Got me little Snapper unhooking that. Ready for them chub. That's the plan. Got the Gray's 12 foot specimen tw twin tip rod. Reel loaded with 8 pound main line. And uh, going to fish a little hair, a little ledger link. As you can see there. Some triple A's on there, I can always add a few more if I want to. I can try and place that bread flake right right by that tree in the, in the end of his swim. Let's get going. <coughs> I 
As you can see, I've got a little light ledger link on there. Got three AAs and a piece of bread. Pressed it sort of direct to the hook. You can see the hook there sticking out. And uh, if the fish are a bit finicky, then I might go on to like what I call the a loop lasso rig, which is like a like almost fishing it like hair rig style. But I'm going to start off with this. See how we get on. Hopefully the, the chub will be in a more of a hungry, hungry mood than a finicky mood, being the start of the season. Right, let's get this out. And after a couple of missed bites, the tip pulled straight round and I was into my first first chub of the new season. Not a monster, as you can see, but it's a chub all the same. And they put up a great scrap. And uh, there's fish out there, which is great. And I'm getting right as close as I can get to that tree on the sort of the end of the swim. A little chuck down there, and uh, I've had a few pull rounds of this took a like into my piece of bread flake and uh, well whopped it straight round so let's hope that there's a few few more of these down there and some bigger ones but what a good start to the season my third chuck out and I've had a fish already great the season has begun well, the forecast was for sort of cloudy conditions which is what I was hoping for, but it's blue sky and the sun is starting to stick its head out and it's putting these sunglasses on because the sun's shining in my face as I'm casting and um, I'm hoping that it will cloud over. I've just switched over to a piece of cheese paste now. Um, the, after catching that small chub, the bites have, have dried up a bit as you would imagine. It's funny, you, you get lots of indications, you get that proper pull round, then it disturbs the swim. But I'm reluctant to move it really, because if it does get overcast, then I'm sure, I'm sure I could draw the chub back onto the feed again. I'm still getting the odd little sort of pluck on the tip. So there is still fish about, it might be small stuff there, but it's just a case of persevering. There's not many swims on this stretch, so I haven't got much of a choice. So I'll, I'll at least give this another hour or so, if not longer, and uh, see see what happens before deciding whether to move down the river or further up the river. Um, up the river, I'm a little bit <laughs> dubious about because it's not many people go up that way, and uh, it's probably it's going to be overgrown. I guarantee it. And I uh, didn't, didn't bring the uh, secateurs with me, which is a bit of a mistake. Probably should have done, really. But the swims get fish more that side, so it's more beaten down, even though it's the start of the season. 
but that way it's um, it's quite a long walk to some of the swings. As you can see, the sun sticking its head out at the moment. That tree is giving the swim a bit of shade. So as long as that stays like that until obviously the sun moves right round, then I'll carry on. I'll keep persevering. I'll just keep getting the odd little tap. I'm alternating between bread flake and, and cheese paste. As soon as that sun moves round, it's just going to light up the whole the whole swim. I think that will probably kill it. And they did say it's supposed to be overcast today, but today and tomorrow. It's so frustrating. I mean, I prefer to fish the rivers like in the autumn onwards. The trouble is you wait and then the rains come like we did last year and you just can't get on the rivers. They're just unfishable or in flood. So it's very frustrating to be a river angler the last two or three, four seasons. It's just been crazy. So frustrating. I'm just hoping that we don't get such a wet winter this year. Because every year I say it, I want to do a nice river campaign. You can never get on. You can never get on them. You know, it's so so annoying. But I think positive. It will be a good winter, weather-wise. Hence, fishing-wise. Switch back to a piece of bread. Me that first chub, well, the only chub so far. Well, I've just had a, a walk downstream of the river. So there's a couple of swims. I thought I'd check out, see what they're like. And uh, because I haven't got the cutting tools with me, there's absolutely no way I can fish them. In fact, one of the swims, I can't even see where you can get through and down. It's just completely overgrown. It's not a swim that's fished that much. So I suppose what we've last year, I guess it won't fish probably not at all and uh, so it's really overgrown the other swim I can't even see where the where the bank stops it's just completely overgrown unless I had some cutting tools there's no way I could fish fish them so downstream of the river this is oh sorry downstream of the bridge this is the, actually the only fishable swim so I might have to um, stick around a bit longer. I've got my float tackle with me so I might set up one of my big sticks and uh, sort of trot a bit of bread through. So I think I might do that. And uh, just hope that the cloud cover turns up like they've been predicted. Uh, upstream of the bridge there's a two or three swims that I, that I like. Um, I may save them for another day so I might I have to stick around in this swim um, and every now and then just swap over maybe a float rod and, and then the uh, bread flake quiver tipping 
and see what happens. I just had a little, another little pull around after I sort of rested the swim to go downstream and have a look. So I was probably gone about 20, 25 minutes. And because um, and the farm is filled as well, it's all up here and it'd be a case of, you know, really struggling to to even get your gear through there to, to walk to, to the swims. Normally I'll fish that later in the season when things have died down a bit. But um, that'll only happen if the, if the rain stays away this season. So anyway, I think I'll, I'll set my float rod up and give that a go. Well, there's my little selection of the floats. Just bring a few bit odds and sods down to the riverbank, especially when you've got long walks and you're fighting your way through all the undergrowth. And uh, it might seem a little bit overkill, but I'm going to put a four gram Avon stick on because it's it's rapids over on that far bank. And I think this will have plenty of weight and will let me sort of control control where the bait's going to be rather than let it get washed or washed all over the place in the rapids on that far bank and then, uh, and then I can sort of manipulate the float around the swim so I'm going to put a four gram even one of the coral sticks on and I'm going to fish six pounds straight through to a big hook and a piece of bread flake I reckon that'll do the trick. It's another option anyway, and uh, it looks quite a nice swim to fish the flow, I must admit. So I'm going to do that, put that on. I'm going to use my float master, dread and float master rod in the 15 foot version of it. I can fish it at 13 or 15, and uh, that'll, uh, that'll give me a bit more control. Especially like because there's quite a lot of snags in this swim, and I can sort of turn, hopefully turn their heads if I look into anything half decent. So there we go. Let's set the rod up. Well, I've now changed over to a float. Set the float rod up. The uh, 15 foot float master, and uh, you see four gram Corum Avon Glide float. Now I've bolted it with. Five AAA down to a size that's a size 12 hook and I'm going to be fishing bread flake on it. Let's put a bit of flake on the hook Just squeeze around the shank a little tug yeah that's good what chub could resist that? Assuming there's any there, that is. So all I'm basically doing is just dropping, no casting involved, just dropping the float down the middle, letting it trot and then just controlling the line, just lifting my finger up off the spoiled bail arms back, just letting the stick float run through do its course and I can control it all the time. It's just running through in the shade now. Over towards that sort of stuff that's accumulated against one of the branches over there. So I'm controlling the line with my finger. Little touch then. I just ease the float back if I want to just move the rod towards me. Which will lift the bait up. If there's any chub over there, not tempt them to come out. Grab the bait. Well I've had a Give it about an hour on the stick float, the big stick, a couple of little tiny, tiny little knocks, but nothing, nothing, uh, no real bites in anger there. So I don't really think that the chubber there and the sun's 
come out. I've just checked the weather forecast. And, uh, the, the weatherman has lied to me <laughs> for a change. And uh, it's mostly sunny today. Tomorrow though, because I'm off tomorrow, is for scattered showers. So I'm going to come back tomorrow. I might try the other section of the river, give that a go. And um, hopefully we'll have better luck tomorrow. I've been fishing for probably maybe four hours now and uh, I know the river and weather conditions are like this. It's just no good. Maybe tonight, the last few hours when the sun goes down, you may fish up till, you know, maybe nine o'clock, half nine when it gets dark, you've got to come off the water then. But um, I'll come back in the morning. Hopefully the weather may won't lie to me. It will be scattered showers, which means it'll be cloudy and uh, that'll improve the fishing and I'll try the other side of the bridge and uh, see what happens tomorrow so I'm going to pack up feel a little bit you know down really because I was looking forward to today but there you go when you know the rivers as well as you do then you kind of know you're wasting your time and I don't like wasting your time I'm too old for that I can't afford to waste time so I'm going to get off back home, do a few little odd jobs, come back tomorrow. Well, I'm back down the river. And uh, hopefully, the forecast is for overcast conditions, which is better than yesterday morning. Just come down again for another few hours to see if I can tempt myself with a nice big chub. I had one yesterday, a small one as you see, which was welcome. I'd like to, to think I could get a bigger one today, so. That's the plan. I'm going to try a different section of the river today. And um, see what see what happens. Same tactics. We use bread flake. Got some cheese paste again. A few pellets in case I want to try and hair rig some a bit later. worth another go. Here we go again. Another few hours this morning. And this is why a lot of us anglers love to go fishing. Look at that countryside. It's beautiful. Absolutely lovely. So peaceful. And uh, the chance of catching a nice fish or two is really an added bonus when you get to fish lovely venues like this fantastic well this is a swim that looks interested never fished this one before and it's one of the shortest walks from the car park 
So yesterday morning I was on the other side of the bank and for the other side of the bridge, so it was a much longer walk. And uh, I think I'm regretting leaving the float rod behind them. I thought I'd go a bit lighter today, so I've just brought my quiver tip rod with me. And this looks like a nice swim to trot down. Should have brought me a float rod. Never mind this bit of a feature there by the by the stanchion. So there's got to be a chub or two in there, surely. Right, let's get the gear out. Mr. Bite then. Damn. Well, that was almost an instant bite. Tip went way around. And I pulled it out. Well, it's about 20 minutes. 20, 25 minutes after I had that pull reel that I pulled out of. I've not had a bite since, not even had a little tap. So obviously that spooked the fish. I'm still feeding liquidized bread because I might push the chub further down. Or the same chub, it might just be the odd, the odd one or two. But I was getting all the little tap taps and then it just straight round. Um, I'd say there's not a lot of chub, chub in this river, so when you do find them, you have to try and make the most of them, because they don't really give you a second chance. Most annoying.
massive bag of fish. It's smaller than yesterday. Quite a long way. It's the target species, even though it's particularly small. It's still a nice fish, a lovely fish. It's the future, the future of the river. So uh, it's nice to catch it all the same. A real plump fish that took a life into my, my bread flake. Lovely. Let's pop him back and see if there's see if his granddad's there. <laughs> I've about done now for this morning session just that small chub to show for my getting up at four o'clock this morning which proves you don't always get what you want but I've enjoyed it all the same it's been fantastic to get back on the rivers again and I've got some some good plans lined up for this season I'm going to go down on the Thames on the Hampshire Avon and I know I said that last year but I'm definitely going to do it this year I've already penciled in some dates to get down to those those wonderful rivers and uh, to do a bit more filming for, for fishing tail films just checking make sure my tip won't wang you around then and um, i'll see you again soon if you like this video please give it a like and if you haven't subscribed to the channel please do it always helps the the youtube algorithms and it gets to push the channel out there and uh, i'll see you again soon on fishing tail films <laughs>